once again I want to welcome all of you as we continue our study this evening in the book of Nehemiah. We'll be looking at Nehemiah chapter 7. And just before we go, we will be singing another hymn. And those of you who are home, you, you can grab your hymn book. We are looking at number 61, Immortal, Invisible, To God, Only Wise. I know a long time we haven't opened our hymn books. So we would want you to, to get your hymn books as we praise Almighty God. Let's just go before God in prayer just before we go to that hymn. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening with grateful hearts for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship as we continue, Lord, to look at your word. Father, indeed your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Father, we just bless and praise you, Lord, that in spite of not being able to meet together, Lord, that we can still, dear God, meet dear heavenly father in our homes in lord and to praise and to magnify you lord we pray that as we continue to look at your word father you are so amazing yes. lord you are far finding out our minds are too small to really comprehend how great and how wonderful you are but lord we pray that all that we are all that we will ever be lord that we will give it all to you because you deserve the honor, you deserve the glory, you deserve the praise. Father, as we continue to magnify your name this evening, we ask that you will go down before us. We pray that as we look at your word, that your word will come alive unto us. Lord, your prophet tell us that the grass wither and the flowers fade it away, but your word endure it forever. Father, we pray that as we examine those everlasting words, that it will so come grant us the strength and the courage to go forward father your word and lord tell us that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of god so we pray that as we study your word our faith will increase and that we will be able to live by faith because your word again said that the just shall live by faith so father we commit the service into your hand and we pray your blessing upon each one of us all those who will come under the sound of our voices wherever we are as we return lord that you are going to so move in a mighty way to bring us closer and closer to you hear our prayer this evening and bless all our souls for we ask all these blessings through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. okay so you want to sing that in immortal invisible to god only wise in light accessible it from our eyes <laughs> Oh 
immortal, invisible, to God only wise. This evening as we look at chapter 7, I am going to read the first eight verses. And from verse 9 through to verse 73, from verse 9 to verse 73, we have the list of the names of those who came back to Jerusalem after the captive those who came from captivity back to Jerusalem and we had a, a list of all those names that are there now I know that some many of you sometimes when you read in the Bible and you come to the part of the genealogies and this one be gathered that one or that one be gathered that sometimes you tend to skip over those names but remember that the Word of God tells us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and if God placed those names in the Bible, he placed it there for a reason. Right? And we can find comfort, we can find strength, we can find encouragement even as we read those names. So as we go through chapter 7 this evening, I pray that God will so grant us the wisdom and the understanding that his word will come alive unto us. Now we, we, have, we, we saw last week in chapter 6 that in spite of all the opposition in spite of all the, the the hindrances in spite of all that had place that the wall was completed don't mind what the enemy had tried how they tried to frustrate the work how they tried to 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 to, to prevent the walls from being built because of the persistence and because of the, the, the type of leadership that under Nehemiah that the walls was built. They came through a lot of problems, a lot of difficulty. There was a number of things that were there to frustrate them. But in spite of all that, they kept their hand to the work. As Nehemiah had said to his enemies, I am doing a good work. <clears throat> I am not going to leave this work to come down to you while the work suffered. Nehemiah was focused and all the complaints, all the problems that was thrown at him, he committed it to the hands of God. And I can never stress enough, I can never stress to you enough how important it is to take it to the Lord in prayer. If it is one thing we can learn from Nehemiah is that he took his problems to the Lord in prayer. He didn't bother to engage the enemy man to man, but he took it to the Lord in prayer. And he continued to do what God called him to do. And now that the work was finished, the work was finished, Nehemiah <coughs> did not try to hold on. He did not try because he knew that his task was completed. So let's just read <coughs> the first eight verses of chapter 7. <coughs> and I hope that you will continue to read the remaining verses with all the names of those who came back because there is a message in those names in the list of those names for us and I'm going to see what we can do how we can get a further understanding of why these names are there <clears throat> why did God allow those names to be written so, so I pray that God is going to bless us as we continue to look at this word Nehemiah chapter 7 beginning from verse 1 then it was when the wall was built and I had hung the doors with the gate keepers the singers and the Levi had been appointed then I gave charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani and Hananiah the leader of the city Dale for he was a faithful and man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, Do not let the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot. And when they stand guard, let them shut the bars, the doors, and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. One at his watch station and another in front of his own house now the city was large and spacious but the people in it 
were few and the houses were not built. Then God put into my heart to gather the nobles and rulers and the people that they might register by genealogy. And I found a registry of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found written in it. These are the people of the province that came back from the captivity and those who had been carried away by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his own city, those who came with Zerubbabel and Joshua and Nehemiah and Azariah and Rehemiah and Nathani and Mordecai and Bishan. Okay, we will just stop there at verse 7. At verse 7. But as I said, you continue to read so that you will you will know the reason why these names are given. Now as we as we as we, 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 we look here, the first thing we notice here is that the gates were now hung. The wall was now finished. You understand? And 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 at the walls was finished, one of the things that was appointed we saw here, Nehemiah. We, we saw that the um, the singers and the Levi were organized and they were organized to give praise to Almighty God. So one of the reasons for the walls being built <clears throat> was that the people of God can worship and praise God with that freedom. You understand? There was nothing to hinder them. Now that they, are, <clears throat> they had that wall among them and they had that sense of safety, there was nothing to hinder them. So <clears throat> the wall was important. But what was more important, because the wall was now built, we saw gatekeepers appointed. We saw singers appointed. We saw the Levite appointed. And they were there to praise Almighty God. <clears throat> they were... <clears throat> they were <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> they were there to sing praises unto Almighty God so that the words they, they were now singing praises with the freedom with the assurance that we have a sense of protection so they could praise God they could sing so that the, so here we find the gatekeepers here we find the Levite here we find the singers another thing that is important here is that Nehemiah said to them, listen, <clears throat> I want you to appoint watchmen. I want you to appoint guards. And you must appoint God from the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You see, even though the wall was built, the wall couldn't guard itself. They needed to put watchmen on the wall. They had a wall that was built. But now they are to place watchmen on the wall. Now before I go back to, to stress on the importance of the watchmen, I want to, 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 to see what Nehemiah said about his brother Hanani and the leader of the city Hananiah. And he said that these men were faithful. They were good and faithful more than any other one of the things that god call us to do is to be faithful to be faithful sometimes you may not be as articulate as others some people are gifted some people are talented but they lack faithfulness and what god wants is faithful servant here the world <coughs> the world was built and the city was now handed over to faithful men who feared almighty God now when you have leaders that fear God you stand in a good step 
Amen. David became one of the greatest leaders that Israel had ever known. And what was the attribute of David? He feared God. You understand? God saw, God saw of David. He said, he's a man after my own heart. We need leaders whose heart is after God. So Nehemiah appointed his brother and he appointed the other leader because they were faithful. It was on the account of their faithfulness and the account that they fear God that they were appointed. They were appointed. So after the appointment and the, and, and the singers were appointed, Nehemiah gave the instruction that they need to put guards on the wall. Now, as we look at our own lives, as we look at our own life, you know, I ask the question as we go through the, se the series, are there any breaches in your wall? Are there any breaches in your wall? No, if there's no breaches in the wall, maybe you have a wall secure. But do you have watchmen watching on the wall? Because a wall could be scaled. The security could be breached. Do you have watchmen on the wall? No, you may ask, you may say, well, Pastor Ellis Mill, how do I put watchmen on that wall? How do I put watchmen? How do we watch that wall that God had put around us? Jesus said that men ought always to what? Pray. Nice. He said that we need to what? watch and pray. He told us that we need to pray in season and out of season in order to catch the right season. He said that we need to have watchmen on the wall. Now, what I find so interesting about the qualifications of these watchmen that Nehemiah said, he said, appoint men from Jerusalem appointment from Jerusalem to be guards on the wall. Why did he so stress they could have gotten Israelites who were looking out, living outside of the city? They could have gotten some of them who were not <clears throat> living within the walls. But Nehemiah specifically said appoint watchmen from Jerusalem. You see, Jesus tells us in the gospel about the good shepherd and the hireling. The hireling will be there and when you see a bear and a sheep and, and a wolf coming, he really don't care about that sheep. He running for his life. But the shepherd, because those sheep belong to him, the shepherd will stand and defend the sheep with his very life. So Nehemiah said, if you have to put guards, get guards from within Jerusalem. Because those guards know that in guarding the wall, that they are guarding the security of their wives, their children, and their household. They had an interest in that city. And the, their safety resides in the safety of that city. So that those guards that were appointed had a vested interest in securing and <coughs> making sure that nothing come to disturb the peace of the citizen within that city. So he said, upon guards from within Jerusalem, so that in guarding, in guarding the city, they will be guarding their own home. And they will be protecting the lives of the citizens, but the life of their own household. So they appointed guards. And then we went on to the list of all these names. We asked ourselves the question, why did they have to put all these names? What was so important? Why did they have a registry? And this registry in the scripture, we find it both in Nehemiah, and in Ezra. This is the second time that we have a list of these names. 
Why was it so important that these names were registered? Now, after the, the fall of the Babylonian kingdom, and the Medes and the Persian came into power, the policy of the Babylonian and the Assyrian was whenever they conquer a nation that they will take that population, the citizens of that nation, and transfer them out to another country, put them in exile away from their home country. But the policies of the Medes and the Persian was that when they came into power, those people that they found in exile, they gave them the privilege to go back to their own country. Now, the Jews <clears throat> were given the privilege to go back home. They had spent 70 years in exile. Yeah, <clears throat> they had spent 70 years in exile. And they were now given that privilege to go back home. What is so amazing and so interesting about these names is that out of all the Jews that were taken into exile, only 2% choose to come back. The call came. Let us go to Zion. You are free to go to Zion and out of the population of those Jews who were in exile only 2% 2% now if we take into consideration some of them had been living there for 70, 60, 50 years some of them were born in exile the only home that they know was in their exile country. Some of them had been so emerged into the culture of the nation that they were carried into. That when the call come, they did not want to pull up stakes. They didn't want to be bothered about going back. They had become accustomed <coughs> living in exile. And out of those only 2% of those who were taken into captivity was willing to return. So the Lord wanted those names to be registered. And one of the reasons why those names are registered, God said these people answer the call. They answer the call. They were pioneers. They were willing to pull up stake. They were willing to start over again in <coughs> the promised land. Right? So they packed their bundles. And they set out on their way to go to the promised land. And, and, and the Lord made sure that their names was recorded. So that generations after generation could go back and see that their descendants did not feel comfortable in exile. <clears throat> but when the opportunity was given, they were willing to pull up stakes and go they came back so that their names was registered but not only their names was registered their profession their profession we hear some of them were were, were, were servant in solomon house some were goldsmiths <clears throat> some were, 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 were carpenters some were builders their profession was also recorded right so had they all came back <clears throat> They all came back. They took the opportunity to come back. They were willing to be pioneers. They were willing to be pioneers. To, be an to answer the call. The captivity is over. You are free to go back to your own country. Many of them who went into captivity, as I said, they made themselves comfortable. They made themselves comfortable in captivity and were not willing to pull up their stakes and come back. So the Lord allowed Ezra and Nehemiah to record, to ensure that those who came 
that their names was recorded in the word of God. Now, it is wonderful to have your name recorded in God's word. Mm. And, but there are some people whose names are recorded, but they are recorded for the wrong purpose. Mm. These names are recorded for the good purpose. Because while others refuse to come, they came. So sometimes we go through these names and we figure, we name this one, we got one, and that one. Right? But not only were the name, but the families. You read through the genealogies, and families was recorded. You had the high priests and their family, right? the goldsmith and their family. It was recorded. Right? So that those who came, God ensured that for centuries after, that their names would not be forgotten. Their name would not be forgotten. Many of those who stayed in the captivity, we don't know who they are. There's no mention of their name anywhere. Their name, they, they exist, but nobody knows that they existed. Nobody knows who they were. But those who came back, we know who they were. We know who they were. You could imagine the Jews being a descendant and they're looking at their genealogies. And they will say, my father or my ancestors was willing to take that risk. They were not willing to stay in the, cap in the land of their captivity. But they were willing to take that journey. They took the opportunity and they came back. You understand? You could imagine as they look at that list, they said, my ancestors were there when the walls was rebuilt. My ancestors helped to rebuild that wall because they take the opportunity to come back and their names are recorded in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, as we look at chapter 7, I say here, we saw that Nehemiah had finished his work. And he wasn't prepared to just give up. I mean, he wasn't prepared to hold on. The task that he came to do was now accomplished. And he was willing to give it up and to see what next God had for him to do. And in giving it up, he ensured that it was passed on to faithful men who fear God, even though one was his relative. You know, sometimes we talk about nepotism. <clears throat> right? We talk about nepotism and this thing. And, and sometimes we have to look at the facts. You know? If there's somebody from your family who is faithful to God and who has the ability, because remember, it is the same Hananiah, his brother, who came to Sushan, and told him about the condition of the world. Mm -hmm. It was the news that his brother brought to him that stirred up this passion in him. And now that he, the world was finished, the same Hananiah, his brother, that he gave the responsibility to look after the affairs of Jerusalem. There was no nepotism in it. But you see, God is always looking for faithful men. Faithful men. We need to ask ourselves the question. I mean, how faithful are you? How faithful are you? Can you be entrusted with the responsibility of taking care of God's possession? Can you be entrusted? with that responsibility. Nehemiah said these men, they were more faithful as far as he could see within the city. <coughs> Excuse. There was none like um, Hanani and Hananiah. They were far above on the account of their faithfulness and their faith in Almighty God. 
one of the things, you know, as we go through this Christian life, and I think that one of the things that sometimes I still, sometimes we find that there are people who are so talented, who are so gifted, but they lack faithfulness. They lack faithfulness. Some of them have been given a talent, blessed by Almighty God, but they lack that faithfulness. Brothers and sisters, we need people who are faithful. God is looking for faithful leaders. Right? God is looking for faithful leaders. As I said, we are, the walls was built so that the people of God could worship and praise God in freedom so that the gatekeepers the singers, the Levi was organized so that they could praise and give God the glory that is due unto his holy and matchless name. And once God has given us that wall, our duty is to praise him. To praise him and to give him the glory that is due to his high and exalted name. As I said, wall don't guard itself. In the book of Ezekiel, we saw where the Lord said to Ezekiel, I have appointed you a watchman. And with that comes a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. He said, because if you stand on the wall and you see the enemy coming, and you blow not the trumpet, and the enemy come in, he said that their blood stain will be on your shoulder. He said, but if you blow the trumpet and they take heed, take, they don't take heed, then the blood stain will be upon their own shoulder so Jeremiah so, so, so Nehemiah said listen if we are to get watchman we are to get watchman who live within Jerusalem who have an interest in Jerusalem because they know that the safety of that city is important to their own safety their own safety and brothers and sisters as we examine our own life as we examine our own wall i always like to ask question and the question i'm asking is your wall guarded is your wall guarded you know another way that we can think about guarding our walls is make sure that the watchman that we have they are faithful Mm -hmm. The first psalm that we have, it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You understand? You can't be have your wall guarded. You understand? And you're standing in the way of sinners. You, you, you understand? You can't have your wall guarded and you're taking the counsel of the ungodly. You can't have your wall built around you. And your wall, you want your wall to guard it, but you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. But the psalmist shows us how our walls can remain guarded. He said, but his delight is what? In the Lord, the Lord. And in the Lord does he what? Meditate, Meditate day, day and night. night. Brothers and sisters, if we want our walls to be guarded, you understand? We got to meditate on the word of God day and night. Yes, the Lord said that he has posed his guardian angels around the just. You understand? We saw Job. Satan could not penetrate that wall unless God gave him the position. He said, move your heads now. Move your wall from around him. Because Job was a faithful man unto God. Nehemiah said, listen, yes, the wall is completed. The gates are hung. The doors have been put in place. He said, but listen, listen, you need to put guards on the wall. And those guards must come from within Jerusalem. And as I 
before we go into our time of questions, as I've said before, that we have the list of these names out of the thousands that went into captivity, out of the great multitude that was taken into captivity, only 2% came back. Only 2% came back. But the Lord ensured that those who took the opportunity, who answered that call, who came back to rebuild the wall and to repopulate the promised land, that their names was immortalized in scripture. They were willing to start over. They were willing to start from scratch. Whatever position they held in the, in, in, in the captive land, whatever resources they had acquired, whatever jobs they may have been employed with, whatever um, situation they were in, in that foreign land, they were willing to give it up and answer the call. It's like Abraham when God said to Abraham, leave your father's house and come to the land that I will show you. Abraham pulled up his stake and he went. He went to the land that the Lord showed him. And so these captive names are written here as a memorial to them because they were willing to be pioneers. They were willing to follow and answer the call of Almighty God. You see, sometimes God calls us, you know, and when God calls us, sometimes we have to leave our comfort zone. Some of them were in the comfort zone. Some, of, as I said, out of some of those captives, some of them um, were born into captivity. They heard about Jerusalem. They heard about the, the land that they came from, from their parents, and they wanted to see that land. And they were willing to leave their comfort zone. Because just imagine you living in a place for 70 years, because the Lord had given them the instruction when they go on the Jeremiah. You see, whatever city you're going to, seek the interests of that city. Right? He said, because your interest lies in the interests of that city. So some of them, when they were there, they build themselves up, they become part of that of, of, of the infrastructure of that city. They invested their lives in that city. But when the call came, they were willing. They were willing to leave their comfort zone, they pick up their stakes and they were ready to answer the call of Almighty God. Are you willing to stay in your comfort zone or are you ready to answer the call of Almighty God? God call us sometimes to leave our comfort zone. I can remember my own self, and I think I've told this testimony on many occasions when the Lord told me to leave my job to go into full-time ministry. I mean, that was a difficult situation. It was a difficult situation. But I thank God, I look back every day and I thank God that I answer that call. <coughs> because God has truly truly bless me. God has truly blessed me. So brothers and sisters, maybe God is speaking to some of you now. And he's saying, listen, I want you to do something for me. But you need to leave your comfort zone. You need to leave everything behind. And you need to trust me. Just answer the call. 
and trust Almighty God. These captives answer the call. And so God honor them by ensuring that their names <coughs> was recorded. Their names was recorded in scripture. So that look how many thousand years ago and today we can read and we have a list of all those who came back because they were willing to answer the call. So that these names are important. They are there for a purpose. And they are there to say that if we also answer the call of God, Jesus is calling us. If we also answer the call of God, just like how these names are written, our names will also be written. Remember the disciples when Jesus sent them out? And they came back and they were rejoicing and they were saying to the Lord, even the devil was subjected unto us. He said, don't rejoice about that, you know. But rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb of life. And I say to you this evening that if you answer the call, that your name will also be recorded in the Lamb Book of Life. So may God help us as we continue to do His work. So at this time I want to stop and see if there's any questions or comments that you have. So we try our best to answer them. All right, good night, everyone. So we have a few comments that are in already. Um, so we'll start with the first one. Those who didn't return were quite comfortable in a strange land. This wasn't the land God had given them. Are we comfortable in a place where God doesn't want us to be? Are we too comfortable to respond to what God is saying to us today? And that is true. Sometimes we are, we are comfortable. We are comfortable in places, you know, because we could say strange, same thing, strange places. Eh? We are comfortable in places that God don't want us to be. And, and the question I want to ask then is, are you where God wants you to be? Are you where God wants you to be? You understand? Because God, God, God knows exactly where He wants us to be. But we can only get there if we are willing answer the call and just tying into that particular comment um we have the comment that you know we noted that only two percent responded to the call now they were all given their freedom and likewise we are all given the opportunity to be saved through faith it's a gift of god the bible tells us however only 2% who were given that freedom were willing to take the decision to be like Abraham and really walk a feet. They really didn't have an idea of what they would, would have been returning to. Many of them would not, as you have said, they didn't live there. They were not born there. They may not have even been familiar with the customs. They had no idea of what they were returning to. But they were willing to return and not only return. But they were willing to stay because those that two percent that went back didn't um remigrate even though the walls were broken and i think at the beginning of um the book you told us how long it was between ezra and nehemiah ezra and nehemiah how long it was before nehemiah got that passion to rebuild the wall but that two percent remained even though it was uncomfortable it wasn't um what they would have expected they may have gone from having good jobs and good livelihood to really just being exposed and yet they were willing to stay because they knew that they were called so what do you say to that yes and you see one of the things we arrive at once we follow god instructions and god is going to well let's say god and to answer god's call god's call is god provision and god will provide because of their faithfulness because they were willing to answer that call 
as a matter of fact, the, the wall, some of them were there for at least 30 years because remember the wall when they start to build, they spent 70 years in exile, right? And, and, and 30 years after they came back. Well, well um, from 70 years, some of them were there in the land about 30 years before the wall, the construction or the rebuilding of the wall started, right? But they stayed. They stayed anyway, right? And they repopulated the land of Israel. They stayed there, right? And, and we have to understand that it is from those, that, that group that came back from the exile that Mary and Joseph, <laughs> descendants, and finally Jesus came out of that descendant of those who were willing to come back and populate the promised land all right so we have another comment here the first appointment that was made with the singers and the levites this i think shows how important it is to acknowledge god before anything else amen amen and, and as i said the, the older the walls was important the reason that the wall was the yes we talk about safety but it was built particularly so that God's people can worship Him in that freedom. You understand? Right? They didn't have to study anybody coming in. They could have shut the walls and said, nobody coming in. They'll be praising the Lord. You understand? Mm -hmm. No distraction. Right? We can sing and we can pray. So that He ensured that there were singers, the Levites, and the singers were appointed so that they can have worship. They could praise God in the beauty of holiness all yeah. right we also see here um a comment what we saw is that everyone had to guard over his own house uh -huh. and we want to talk here a little bit about the wall and the importance of guarding the wall so it's good to have a wall but like you said if you have a wall and it's not being guarded it's not protected then your wall is the wall doesn't really serve as a good enough defense so Let's talk a little bit about the importance of being able to guard the wall and the fact that they took responsibility to guard the wall that was in front of their own house. Yeah, well, they, they, had, they had that responsibility of God. And, and as I said before, they didn't take people from outside of Jerusalem to guard the wall. Right? Nehemiah specifically says, look for people in Jerusalem right? so that they have a vested interest because they know that the protection of the wall, guarding that wall, um, means that they are guarding their own safety, right? That they are guarding their homes, they are guarding their family. They are taking an interest in it themselves. Now, even even us as Christians, we, as I talk about, um, we have, once that wall have been established, that we need to guard. And a wall cannot guard itself right so that we have to be always on the alert we have to be always on the alert and that is why they 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 um Paul writing to the Ephesians telling us about putting on the whole armor of God that we will be able to withstand the wiles of the evil one because the enemy will continue to throw darts on them the enemy want to kill you the enemy want to destroy you but if you have on the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness and you shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace and you have on the helmet of salvation, you understand? Eh? Then, and then you have your offensive weapon. You, you, you have, you, you have um, prayer, right? Yeah, and then you have your, your testimonies, right? So, 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 the, so that, that is how we guard our wall. You know? It is important. Make sure that we have on the whole armor. And as I said before, if it is one thing I want you to understand from this book, is that Nehemiah was a man of prayer. Brothers and sisters, prayer is important. Prayer is important. Just as how air is to our physical body, yes. prayer is to our spiritual body. We need to pray. We need to talk to God. Right? 
we need to take it to the Lord in prayer. We need to place our confidence and just allow God to have his way. All right, and just staying there in terms of the comment about the walls, how important it is for us because a few weeks ago when we talked about um, the broken walls, we looked at different things that could cause our walls to be broken. Mm -hmm. And um, we also looked at things that create breaches in walls. It may have been unforgiveness, it may have been bad habits, practices, etc. And you have a lot of people, Christians, who are able to overcome or God bring them to a place where they feel that they've gotten success over, let's say if it's gossiping. And they finally at a place where they feel comfortable and say, you know what? I really commit this to God. I'm going to stop gossiping. I realize it's not something I should be. And it's a breach in my wall. Um, however, when the wall is built, because they're not putting anything in place, and noting here, the strategy that Nehemiah gave was a God-given strategy. And not a, not, it wasn't just a bright idea of what to do. But it was, he said, I got an idea basically from God. Mm -hmm. And God told him, this is how I want you all to be able to guard the city. And a lot of times we apply worldly wisdom and worldly instructions to deal with issues where the Bible gives us instructions of how we overcome. And like you rightly said, putting on the armor of God, testimonies through prayer. And so how, how important is it, just to tie it back in, for us to fight for the victories that God has given us, the walls that he has allowed us to erect in those areas in our life that we've talked about, continuing to fight to keep those walls up. Well, one, one of the things, I, I, if we look at that, we, we can use the theme maintaining your victory. Yes? Maintaining your victory. And let me tell you something, one of the ways that we maintain our victory by praising God in yeah. You understand? By praising God. Once God has given us a victory, we need to praise Him. Right? We need to praise Him. We need to continue praising Him. You know? Because every day then a victory is won. We need to praise Him. A praising Christian is a victorious Christian. You mm -hmm. understand? Right? Because when we praise, we confuse the enemy. Even when things may not go our way, we praise God. Right? We got to praise Him. A praising Christian is a victorious Christian. You understand? Is a victorious Christian. And our wars will continue to be strong as we continue to praise Him. Right? The Apostle Paul, I have learned in all whatever state I find myself to be content. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm content when I have. I'm, I'm content, content when I don't have. have. Amen. You understand? He said, you, you know, and, and then, you know, as one of the examples that I have taken from the Apostle Paul, because sometimes in ministry we go through stress and, and, and all that. All of us have our little weak points and things. But when I read of the examples of some of the things that the Apostle Paul went, went through, through. Mm -hmm. you understand? And sometimes I say, but what it is, what are you complaining about? <laughs> what are you complaining about? Just thank God, eh? Give God the glory. Give Him the praise. Eh? So, so, so one of the ways we can establish that, that God our world is by giving God the honor and the glory and, and praise. We need to praise Him, continue to praise Him in spite of what? He deserves the glory, He deserves the honor, and He deserves the praise. Because and even, even when some of those difficult times come, you see, we grow in difficult times. Difficulty causes us to grow. It causes us to go. It causes us to trust God. And all of us, if we are honest with ourselves, we pray better when we are under pressure. <laughs> we draw closer to God when we are under pressure. So even that is a time to praise God. And make sure that your walls are guarded. All right, so we have two comments here that are on comfort zones. And so I'm going to read them back to back. We sometimes become comfortable where we are rather than going where God wants us to be. Uh -huh. And most times when God calls you from your comfort zone, we have to start over. Is that why most people don't answer the call? Well, but that's quite true because just imagine, just imagine out of the whole multitude that went into captivity. Right? 
and, and wherever they went some the the, the, the the Jewish population grew and out of the of that number only two percent huh? only two percent answered the call to come back we asked well where were the 98 now now we, we look at the the 10 level huh? and we could say at least that was 10 percent right at least 10 percent one one represent 10 percent there hmm. right but here we have two percent of the multitude because they became adaptable and comfortable in a land and even before they went into captivity the lord said listen you're going to be in that captivity for 70 years hmm. right the prophet had said that they will be there for 70 years jeremiah prophesied that it will be the lasting time of the the exile will be 70 years right so that they knew and, and, and being student of the world because they needed they needed they need they were looking at the prophets and the writing and they used to pass it on to their generation right daniel if we read the book of daniel daniel knew that the, the captivity was going to be over because he quoted from jeremiah they knew that <clears throat> but they have become accustomed they have become comfortable living in exile and some of them were not willing to go back to where God wanted them to be. <coughs> how can we sing? <coughs> how can we sing our Lord's song in a strange land? How? No, 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 no. no, hmm. no. At the beginning of their captivity, <coughs> when they asked them to sing the Lord's song, they said, "We can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land." But that seemed to have worn off when mm -hmm. the time came for them to come back home. Right? Now, if we look at today's history and we look at things, I mean, the Jews, wherever they are now, they are going back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They are going back to Israel. Right? They, are, they are now coming from where they were. We find after World War II, where so many Jews were persecuted and they talk about the Holocaust and things, that after that, a number of them came back and they re-established the kingdom of Israel. And even today, many Jews are still now, from wherever they are, they are trying to go back home. Right? They are trying to get back to the promised land. All right, so here's a comment. Um, in terms of everybody playing their part and fulfilling their role, um, they said it's the same thing with the church. Everyone has to do their part for the betterment of the church. Everyone has a role to play and must fulfill their role. It's true, but 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 I mean that is wishful thinking because mm. in reality it does not be so. And and I think I have I have chatted with many, many um pastors and, and they all have the same thing. They all have the same voice because they always tell you it is only a remnant that do the work within the house of God. They are always a remnant that do the house. The majority will come but not um, take up that responsibility. So so even even looking looking at, at um this I mean as leaders it kinda we have to take some courage because we know that this is not something new. And as the word of God said, there's nothing new under the sun. Yes? Two percent hmm. took the opportunity. The others couldn't bother because they figured I ain't going to take that hardship. I had to take that journey back to Jerusalem. I don't build my house here. I don't establish my building there. I have my family here. And I ain't, I ain't going to pull up stakes to, to take that journey. Right? But as I said, but those who took the journey, God ensured that their names were recorded. Their names were recorded. And that's why we have the generations. So that God honored them because they took the opportunity to come back. Nice. Every victory in our life should take us to a deeper level of praise. Amen. Then um, we are all watchmen, not just for our own walls, but for others. Yeah. 
um and and that ties into the last comment i think we have for this afternoon which speaks to the fact that which was the first comment that you made nehemiah did not stick around longer than what he was said native in terms of when he completed the wall he passed on that mantle he passed on that responsibility and even in doing that that was an act of being a watchman a good watchman because if you're sleepy and you can't watch properly or if you know that you should be doing something else then really you're really putting your city at risk and so he was willing to make that transition from what he was sent there to do and recognizing that i've completed my role how important is that within um the church environment in knowing when to just pass the battle well that, that that that's a very important point you know some they they have always been this talk that sometimes people who uh will build up a church to a certain point and then they kill it hmm. because they do not know when to when to move on we must know when to move we must know look you know i mean um you have finished the task that god called you to finish right because sometimes god uses you to bring to the point from a to b and then you want somebody to move it from b to c mm -hmm. look at moses and, and, and joshua. joshua right god moses brought them to the, the promised land god said that moses that is enough for you joshua will take over from here mm -hmm. and carry them over the jordan i think so so, so that that we, we need to understand that and, and work with God's plan, not with our plan. And and Nehemiah did not say, well, look, the wall is built and so and so, and I have done that, that let the people, and they have a wall around them and the gate, so I can stay here and be comfortable. No, Nehemiah for a purpose, and when that purpose was finished, he was willing to give it an example for us to follow as we continue to do God's will. But we just have a final comment that came in here that, that takes a page from your book. Mm -hmm. And it says, the question is, we have to ask ourselves, are we in the 2% or are we stuck in the 98%? And, that and I think it's a fitting comment. Yeah, that's a very, very, very good question. I said, each one of us personally have to examine ourselves and see where we are. Are we willing to leave our comfort zone to follow the leading and the instruction of Almighty God. So we want to come to a time of prayer as we close this evening. Again, let me thank all of you for taking the time to tune in with us. Again, on Sunday, we're looking forward to our Family Bible Hour and our service at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. And so we, we pray that God will continue to bless us as we continue to do as well. So let's just go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, God, thank you for this time, God, where we can spend together just getting to know more about your word, Lord Father, growing in your truth, dear God. God, we ask you, God, even as we have heard, Lord Father, God, that we would apply what we have heard to our lives, dear God. If there be any breaches, Lord Father, God, help us to mend those breaches. Help us to protect our walls, dear God. God, we ask you, dear God, that you, Lord Father, God, will help us to put on the whole armor, God, that we will be able to stand against the wicked ones. God, we ask you, dear God, for your covering, Lord Jesus. God, we ask you that you'll open our eyes and our ears to hear the call that you have placed upon our lives, dear God. We ask you, dear Father, God, that able to the ones who can't see the calls upon our lives there god would be able to say lord father god sometimes we unable to see it but others could see it in us lord father but we ask you that they will be able to be bold enough to point out attributes that can glorify you dear god but we ask you dear god to just cover us all lord father god as we take this time lord father god to get to know where our flaws are where our strengths are god and how we can become closer to you dear father how we can become more effective christians and win more souls for you dear god god we ask you dear god that you will just 
cover our homes at this moment dear father god as we are about to separate lord father god i pray god that you're going to watch over us lord until we meet again on sunday god we ask you dear god just to have you one way in our lives dear god we pray god even at this point in time lord father god that you would have your own way in us dear god lord father god that when we come together again as a, a church when we meet together face to face lord father god we will be stronger we will be tighter knitting lord father god we will have a closer relationship with you because of the time that we have spent apart lord father god we would appreciate the things that we have so much more lord jesus god father god even as we are we are about to close dear father god we ask you one that you will watch over sunday's service dear father god we pray god that there will be no hindrance in the, in the service dear god that the internet will work the way it's supposed to dear father god but we pray lord father god that it will meet the needs that we have lord father god that we'll be able to to have open hearts to receive your word, Lord Father God. It will touch us there, Father God. God, we pray, Lord Father God, that your will will be done, Lord Father God. We ask you that you bless the one who will be bringing the message unto us there, Father God. Help it to be a word that is coming directly from you to us there, God, for this very moment and this very time there, God. Lord, we just ask you to watch over us and guide us as we leave tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Once again, good night, everyone, and God bless you all.